In this video, we are going to see the summary and analysis of the poem Tithonus written by Lord Alfred Tennyson. The story of the poem is based on Greek mythology. Characters involved in this poem are Eos, the Greek goddess of dawn, and Tithonus from the royal house of Troy. The writer of the poem is Lord Alfred Tennyson. His period was between 1809 and 1892. Now let's see the biography of Lord Tennyson. He is an English poet who belonged to the Victorian age. He was born on 6th August 1809 in Somersby, Lincolnshire in United Kingdom. He was educated at Trinity College, Cambridge. It was there he and his brother Charles co-published a book of poems titled Poems by Two Brothers. Then he made friends with another student, Arthur Hallam. After a brief but intense friendship, Hallam died, leaving a bereft Tennyson to devote a number of poems to his memory. In 1842, he published a book titled Poems in Two Volumes. In 1850, he published In Memoriam and dedicated this to his college friend Hallam. That same year, he married Emily Selwood, with whom he had two sons. In 1829, he was awarded Chancellor's Gold Medal. He died on October 1892 in United Kingdom. Tithonus is a poem written by the Victorian poet Lord Alfred Tennyson. It was originally written in 1833 as Tithon and completed in 1859. It first appeared in the February edition of the Conkill magazine in 1860. It was written in blank verse and also in the form of dramatic monologue in which only one speaker is used to tell an entire story. The story of the poem is entirely based on Greek mythology. Eos or Aurora is the goddess of dawn. In Greek mythology, she is called as Eos and in Roman mythology, she is called as Aurora. Tithonus was a Trojan by birth. He was the son of King Laomedon of Troy by a water nymph named Strimo. Eos or Aurora is the goddess of dawn. Eos fell in love with Tithonus and Tithonus asked Eos immortality but forgets to ask eternal youth. Eos grants Tithonus immortality but not the eternal youth. By that, Tithonus lives forever but grew ever older. Now let us see the summary of the poem stanza by stanza. Now stanza 1. It consists of 10 lines. The poem begins with Tithonus bemoaning his immortality as he looks around the woods. Around him he can see the woods decay. He repeats the phrase twice for emphasis as the simple act of life Moving on to death is beyond the realm of his understanding. After decaying, the woods fall and a vapor or mist covers the ground. This vapor is part of the process of reincarnation through which every living thing participates. Now, Tithonus is alone in the world. He is isolated by immortality and he despises it. Many members of mankind have desired the ability to live forever. Tithonus was no exception. But now he hates his own eternal life. He is being consumed by his own immortality and is slowly withering within his own arms. There is no one to soothe him who can understand what he is going through, so he must take comfort in his own presence. He describes himself as a white-haired shadow that is traveling the world in a dream. He has seen and done everything. He is at the limit of the world, trapped in the east with Eos. Now he is completely alone and miserable. Now let's see the second stanza of the poem. It consists of 21 lines. In these lines, Tithonus explains how he came to be in this sorry state. These lines describe the sorry state of the speaker, that is, Tithonus. He is now a grey shadow but was once so glorious in his beauty that he was chosen by Eos. Eos or Aurora is the personification of dawn in this poem. She fell in love with Tithonus and he begged her to give him immortality. 
Tithonus was made immortal by Eos. At this point, Oz have worked their wills, and the continuation of his aging process has started. Oz have beat him down and wasted him, but Eos was completely untouched by time, so he was forced to dwell in the presence of immortal youth. He pleaded Eos to take back her gift. She has tears in her eyes as she listens to his plea. Now he understands the importance of the cycle of life. Now stanza 3, it consists of 11 lines and stanza 4, it contains 3 lines. In these stanzas, Tithonus is watching the sky right before the dawning of the sun and the coming of Eos. The sky is like the dark world that all of the humankind came from before they were born. It holds a mystery to Tithonus. Then he describes Eos when she is cresting the horizon. Her team of horses shake off the darkness from their manes. The horses plow forward and hide Eos into the sky. Tithonus repeatedly requests Eos to take back his immortality. But she departs. Now stanza 5. It consists of four lines. And stanza 6, it consists of 14 lines. In these stanzas, Tithonus repeatedly asks Eos to take back her gift. But Eos replies him through tears. He knows if he were to see her crying, he would know that the gods themselves cannot recall their gifts. He is afraid that there is no way for Eos to take back what she has given. Then Tithonus is reminiscing on the better days of his life with another heart that is with another lover. He is remembering the happier times in his life before he even became involved with Eos. Now he is thinking if this had been his chosen path, he would have lived a better, fuller life. He is dreaming of his better times with his past lover. Now stanza 7, it is the last stanza of this poem. It consists of 13 lines. In the last stanza, Tithonus is asking Eos to no longer hold him in the east where the sun always rises. His nature is unable to mix with her own. Even though they may both be immortal, his visage and the constitution are no longer what they were. Tithonus does not feel for Eos the same way as he used to. He pleads with her to release him and let him return to the ground. If she was to release him as he so deeply desires, he will still be able to renew her beauty every morning and see his grave within the earth. He will die and the earth in earth forget these empty courts are the empty days in which he has been living. With these words, the poem comes to an end. Till now, we have seen the summary of the poem. Now, let us see the analysis of the poem. It is one of the most celebrated poems of Tennyson. It is written on the Greek subject. This poem is a kind of penitent to Ulysses. These two poems present a remarkable contrast. In this poem, Tennyson is expressing the danger of abnormality of the desire. The source of the poem is one of the Homeric hymns. Tithonus is presented in the poem as a pathetic character. The story of the poem is mainly based on Greek mythology. The subject of the poem is based on the very meaning and purpose of life. It explains the pitiable plight of Tithonus. It expresses that the human body is subject to decay and destruction. Then it says that gods have to got their own limitations. They can grant gifts but can't withdraw the gifts so granted. Then it says about time. Time has its own laws. Time is ruthless. Nothing can escape the scars of time. Then we can see many contrasts in this poem. Contrast pervades the whole poem. The contrast within himself. What once he was and what he is now. Youth versus old age. Beauty versus ugliness. Strength versus weakness. 
hope and earning versus dependency and disgust then there is the contrast with his own self and his beloved aurora the goddess of dawn aurora is as young and beautiful and fresh as the eve was then there is contrast between love and death aurora still loves tithonus but tithonus is in love with death we can find the realization of stark realism in this poem tithonus the great lover of aurora has come down to the plane of realism in the wake of the grimmest reality of life tennyson has blended many colors and shades of human emotions in a very subtle way and made the poem an exquisite piece of literary art this poem is written in the form of a dramatic monologue tithonus is the main speaker and aurora is supposed to be the silent listener moreover this poem contains many beautiful poetic imageries this poem reflects the pictorial quality of tennyson abundantly each and every line of this poem contains sensuous visual poetic imagery the description of the awakening of aurora the glimmer on her brow her sweet look slowly brightening before they dazzled the stars the wild team of horses shaking off darkness from their manes and her departure are extremely beautiful this poem is remarkable for its purity of tone its musical rhythm and its beauty of style this poem considers the relation of humanity to nature and god the story of this poem differs somewhat from the greek mythology in greek mythology zeus granted immortality to tithonus but in this poem eos granted immortality to tithonus tithonus the protagonist of this poem longs for death here we can see the unnatural combination of mortal and immortal this poem memorializes and expresses tennyson's feelings about the death of his close friend arthur henry hallam this poem is a dramatic monologue spoken by tithonus to his beloved eos goddess of dawn it is in seven stanzas in blank verse and its meter is iambic pentameter this poem is a crisis lyric here death is to be desired not feared since it is part of the natural cycle of mortal species this poem depicts the futility of eternal life without youth tennyson developed the idea for a poem about these themes of age and mortality after hearing a remark by emily selwood none of the tennysons ever die till now in this video we have seen the summary and analysis of the poem tithonus written by lord alfred tennyson hope you would have understood them very clearly Thanks for listening.